Hello and welcome back to Barnsley for Players Championship 26. 25. It's semi-final time of course and what more could you possibly ask for? 25. Two incredible dark players who have shown it not just today but pretty much most of this season. 25. And this has the potential of being a Players Championship 25. Classic. They don't play each other that often. And I am salivating very close to my microphone right now because the possibilities of this are endless. 25. The winner of this game will take on either Maras Razma or Rob Cross. And Cross has not failed to register 25. a three-figure average in every game he's played today. Razma is 25. up against it. But this one is a lot more level. Good banter between these two. And there's plenty to talk about when it comes to these two against each other. 25. This could go on for a while. Nobody wants to relent. Having the start is a very important thing. That million dollar smile that Nathan Aspinall owns has just got a little bit wider as he takes the throw in this best of 13 match just digging into their past against each other it's incredibly appropriate because in this building they've had their only meetings and funnily enough they came in consecutive days Saturday the 4th of September 2018 they played each other in a first round match and Ryan Searle won that match by six legs to three little did they know that the following day their careers would change when they would play each other in a final under this very roof and Aspinall would return the favour for his first ranking senior title as a PDC pro and that is the game that changed his entire life not just his entire career. It's the famous I had 20 quid in me pocket story. And when he won that, everything changed. But things changed for Ryan Searle that day as well. And he's kicked on since then. He's become a real threat. And he is climbing up the rankings like a very fit fireman up a ladder. 20 for tops for the first leg. Great single, but a little scooch is needed. Perfectly scooched and perfectly executed for a first leg advantage. 100. Today really has been throwing up some incredible games. I was covering that Michael Van Gerwen action against Daryl Gurney, which was spectacular but I was a witness to the quarter final between Aspinall and Dirk van Dijvenbode it was a 180 fest and it was again Nathan Aspinall showing us just what he's capable of 59. he's taken out multiple 170 finishes today just bolstering his reputation for being a maximum checkout wizard but three of his five games today have been three-figure averages. And I'm not just talking about a shade over 100. I'm talking big. 138. He's tactically astute. He's incredible at executing that treble 20. And in Ryan Searle, he's got a real muse here. Someone who will push him. Watch out for how good Searle is at tops. If he's sharp there, gets enough attempts, he might win this match. And that is a good sign for Ryan Searle and Ryan Searle fans as he gets confirmation from the ref. Yes, it's in. Aspinall's come through Adam Gavlas with his worst performance of the day. 81. A 6-1 victory, averaging only 91, but he only needed to average 91. That's the thing. He didn't have to stretch himself 100. but then things got real he beat Gary Anderson with a sensational display 
then Christoph Ratajski, then Jose de Souza and Dirk van Dijvenbora. He's taken out four of the biggest hitters in darts in this run. And he's got another one in his way right now. He pretty much doubled the amount of 180s that he got for the entire day in his last match. That's how impressive that performance was against Dirk. Well, he averaged 108 and a half. But Searle okay. has the capability of maximums too. And he dips his bread there for the first time. Six. Aspinall's just got to watch out for that last start follow through sometimes. It can get a little bit skewed away. As Searle misses the ball for the 1-2-1 one, one and offers Aspinall a second chance at a 1-6-4 in this match in consecutive legs. For the second time in a row, he's low on the 57 shot. 89. Could this be the first break of throw? Game shot. It is. Beautifully done by Searle. And Heavy Metal is in the lead by one for the first time. As for Ryan's day, he's had some challenges. Mikhail Unterbuckner first. Then took out Robert Thornton with a very good display. But similar to Nathan Aspinall today, he's had three ton plus averages and two in the 90s. Just a little bit of an indication as to how close these two are when they're playing well. Then took out Mike Dedeca with his best statistical performance in the last 32, his board final. 103.77 is best. As he gets another maximum, that's his second. Took out Daryl Gurney after he had disposed of Michael Van Gerwen. You could say that he did Ryan Searle a favour, but Ryan Searle's not afraid of Michael Van Gerwen. His own words this week. And it was Michael Smith in a great game in the quarterfinals, which has set up this wonderful contest, which has so far 96. provided very good stuff. Tops doesn't miss when he's playing well. He sees it about the size of Devon. hasn't been behind much today. 100. The one thing about this season that is borderline perplexing for Nathan is that this is his first semi-final in a players' championship. I have to emphasize that because he was in a semi-final of the European Championship last week. Terrific response from Aspinall. But his first semi-final in a players' championship event on the floor since the 26th of February this year, where he made the first semi-final the day before that. So players' championship one and two got him to this stage, and he's had to wait all the way through to players' championship 26 to make the same stage. He wants to go one further for the first time this year. But he's up against it. He needs a mistake from Searle, who is not making mistakes. Well, that was a somewhat cagey effort, that double A team for tops. And you fancy Aspinall may get within one here. Tops for him. 31. Invitation for Searle. Uh, you guessed it. That. Because when he won his last title against Peter Wright. He really was destructive on that double top all day. One under. You thought that last year when Ryan Searle won his first players championship title against Michael Van Gerwen in the final, if you thought that was a fluke, all you have to do is look at 2021. A win, a runners up spot, to Jose de Souza earlier this year. This is his second semi-final 
with some time after it because it might materialize into his third final. And on top of that, he's got three quarter finals as well. Which is one of the reasons why Ryan Searle is in the top 10 of the seedings for the Players' Championship finals as it stands. Aspinall's climbing that list. And I fancy his current position of 31 is going to get better and better and better over the next five events. Four more left after this. Tomorrow, then three in early November. And yet again, Searle has got position. In a poker game, he's always waiting for Nathan Aspinall to show his hand. He misses. Twice. Unexpected from Searle. And Aspinall is in. And there he is. In in the sixth leg. And he needed a reprieve just to get himself a little bit closer. That could have been five legs to one to Searle. And almost game set and possibly match. He's going to need so much in the way of heavy scoring to get rid of heavy metal here. Such an uncomplicated throw. The extension of the arm out all the way forward and then back and forward in a very smooth fashion. That flick of the wrist forward. He doesn't hyperextend the arm. You can see that he's disappointed with tons. That's the level he's playing at right now. I think we may have a bit of a disturbance at some point here in Barnsley. That's why the players are taking a little bit of a break. If you're not comfortable, do yourself a favour and step back. Back to work for Searle, who halves his score with that 140. Got to get low here. I would switch. But he is super aggressive on that 60 right now with those longer points that he's been using for about eight weeks. This is an Aspinall start in this leg. So he's expected to win. And from this position, I would expect him to win it. To get back within one. Oh, look at that. That's a beautiful thing. Right in the middle of tops. But Searle still retains that valuable break as we are firmly in the meat and potatoes of this semi-final. Right in the middle of it. How will the next furlong go? The other semi-final is tied after six. Three each between Rob Cross and Maras Razma. And that's being played on Razma terms. Because the averages are nowhere near 100 right now. They're a good 7 or 8% under. 94. I'm reliably informed that Maras Razma has hit a 9 darter in that match. That may have been the little disturbance that we saw during this match in the last leg. Congratulations to Maras. But the fact of the matter is, when people hit nine daughters here this week, they lose. That's not a losing type throw there from Searle, who triples down on the 57 to leave double 12. That's extraordinary stuff. Double six. He will be back, but he still won't be happy that not throwing next at the hockey in leg number nine. 70. I like that play from Aspinall. It shouldn't matter. And it doesn't. As Aspinall is now adrift by two, and it is two more that Ryan Searle requires. Seven. 
semi-final run is the best from Aspinall this year, not just in players' championships, but of course in other tournaments One too. Up. He's trending in the right direction, and maybe he's saving his best. Not just for the end of this game, but maybe the end of the season. When they do get the finals, these two are very effective. They've got more than a 50% hit rate in finals when it comes to getting the wins in senior darts, of course. I'm not counting challenge tours or indeed development tours when it comes to Nathan. There he is with another maximum. This is where he's got a blitz, blitz, blitz. And that three, he's probably going to have to turn into at least six. He's going to win this match from here. Maybe even seven. If Searle hits this, it will be a killer. Oh boy. What a finish that would have been. What an attempt. Courageous stuff from heavy metal, and I thought it was going. Splendid shot from Aspinall. I think he was sort of bragging about that double eight and I think he's got every right to thinking about potential World Cup teams in the future if England could have a second team in the World Cup behind say a James Wade and Dave Chisnell this would be incredible yeah. for England these two they've got such chemistry The hit rate in finals at senior level. Two wins from three for Ryan Searle. He's only lost to De Souza this year, and in the other finals he's beat MVG and Wright. He's never in finals with mugs. And as for Aspinall, five wins from nine, so just above 50% himself. Searle puts his foot down with a third 180, and Aspinall knows that without a maximum there, he's not going to put any sort of pressure on this position for Searle, who's looking to take a 12. He doesn't care about the 12. He cares about the number 6. I don't see him missing this. Do you? Well. Double 19. Who's cool? Now this is a big opportunity, but at least it's an opportunity. And what do you do if you're Ryan Searle now? You've just had a bit of a spooky shot at double one to leave double 19, which you've missed twice. He doesn't hesitate. Could this be the turning point in this semi-final? Because Aspinall, if he takes this, will be level. doesn't get a shot at the bullseye and you can see how irate he is at not getting a shot at double from 164 with six darts he has every right to feel a bit knocked and Searle can count himself very fortunate that he hasn't had this tenth leg pinched away from him but it's not in yet and it isn't in with Aspinall on 68 he thought the leg was over double 16 the leg is his that is the turning point in this semi-final because Aspinall should have been 6-4 down it's all tied up and we're now into best of three everything that has happened before is scrubbed all of the advantages that Searle carved out for himself are gone the momentum is gone the advantage of throw is gone he has to start fresh this is a fresh match best of three wins from here and he has a good pedigree of best of three with heavy metal because he has won the champion of champions in South Wales and that was three years ago and that was just before his first meeting with Nathan Aspinall that weekend in September of 2018. 
Another semi is just as close, 5-4 cross. And both of these matches are being played with 90 plus averages. Nobody is hitting their best stuff. Maybe a sign of the tension. But Searle is the one that's closest to the three-figure average. Just tip himself over there like he did. Since the first game of the day, this is the most that the Asp has scrapped. Only about to give up that advantage of throw after just getting it back. Needs another. Oh, it slips into the treble one. He can't get a dot out the board. Is he losing his strength? Bullseye. Oh, he leaves double 19 again. So this is an invitation for Aspen to pinch another leg. He wants a final. You can tell he's easy to read. He wears his heart on his sleeve. 57. For the bull. Oh, boy. I think it was a 25 wire. It was not the bullseye wire, not as I saw it. But he's hit so many bullseyes today, it was the bottom wire. I don't think he knows that. Double eight. And Searle's in front again. That will be a dagger to the heart of the Asp. But what a great game this has been. It's not the game I expected. And I thought this would be thunderous with stacks of 180s and big finishes. But it's still dramatic. Has Aspinall got a brace left in him? So at this point, Six. So you're thinking, can I find a 12 here? And then maybe a 15 in the last leg. Is that going to be enough? Based on what we're seeing from Searle, it might be, but that first start has not been planted on the other side of that 20 wire. And he's having to scrap for scores. Anyone. Apologies that we've lost our graphic. Aspinall's on 344, Searle on 223. back and so is Searle in the 60. Oh and that was a real hook. And this first to a finish though but Aspinall needs to come now with a biggie. Gets the lot. Boy did he need that. He's getting a shot as well and you fancy he needs to find it. Might be treble nine here. Not the worst single. What can Aspinall do? 85 left. Not really close. And he needs errors from Searle at tops. And they don't come very often. And the errors do not come as Searle makes the final. And Aspinall has to wait for another final, another day. He has one more chance tomorrow. But he gave it one hell of a crack today, sir.